Oh, well, hello, Tuesday night upload. How are we doing? Today, I'm gonna take you, well, tonight, I'm gonna take you into my first ever custom fabrication for the vanity of the trailer bathroom and then the design that I am basing around the success of that. I'm gonna show you this really quick. Okay. Two things. Okay. Yes. Yes. Always, always, always turn it off. Always when off you're done. Yep. Power button back here, you fire it up. 35 wire. Okay. You know how the gun works? Yes, sir. It has to be touching something that you're welding. If you guys do not know who Mr. Brett is, well, let me introduce you. He is my right hand lately for projects, just teaching me all the things about welding and blacksmithing, and I would love if you headed to his channel, showed him some love, watched some of his videos, because, I mean, he literally made a sink out of a drum symbol. Come on now. I am going to be making a vanity light mirror spine to the vanity wall of the trailer bathroom. What you see laying before you is called U-Channel, I found out, and I am using it because I wanted it to look like it is folding in to the wall with those curved edges and what you see me doing here is marking for where I'm going to be placing this custom sconce that I will be welding myself. I know I've been saying it a lot but I'm just very proud. I want to design this to be a little bit more on the modern and sharp side because everything else kind of is a little bit flowy within the trailer. I just want these sharp edges to kind of clean it up and chic it up a bit. So that's why I'm choosing the U-channel and the square tube. They're nice and clean now. Yeah. It's great but... Okay, that's where I was, got Bevel. it, you got it, bevel, boom, happening. I am cleaning up where I'm gonna be making my welds and I learned with Brett that that means you need to basically bevel the edges of what you're gonna weld because you need to create this space for the welded metal to go into and adhere to to create basically the joint to join all this together. The reason I wanted to do this design in my brain first physically is because I wanted to see if I even liked the design. And I can totally reuse it for something else if I didn't. You can cut down the metal. You can totally see the difference between the non-cleaned up side and the cleaned up side. So make sure you take your time to do it properly. Before I welded it to the back spine to create the sconce arm, I wanted to cut it at an angle. I believe this was a 35 degrees. I'm not 110%. It kind of was just a perfect angle when Brett threw it on there. And and I traced it immediately with the Sharpie and started to cut it down with the angle grinder because it's just an unexpected detail to the sconce itself. And holy moly, I keep saying sconce, it's not a sconce, it's a vanity light. This whole thing is a, a fabrication for a vanity, vanity light. With the angle grinder, I got a lot of comments about how people are also scared of it. And what I just wanna say is pay attention to the sparks. I think that's the scariest thing is you just need to pay attention to which way they are flowing and ensure you are moving your angle grinder away from you so the sparks aren't hitting you. I think that's the most intimidating thing, but you know, that's just me. All in all, for the vanity light or the arm of the vanity, I'm using three pieces of square tube. Two are angled to intersect the longer piece that is coming directly out. And Brett was using what, to me, equivalent to woodworking is like a magnetic speed square to keep those true 90 degree angles to help while I tack welded this thing in. After I had that first piece go in, you can see it's coming directly out of what I keep calling the spine. And then we are adding those two angled pieces. What Brett and I started to notice was the angle of the light's gonna be pretty aggressive. And that is when I decided to scoot it all the way in and make the executive decision to have the top of the weld of the angled piece look like it is going into the top of the ceiling. So this thing is just gonna fully look like it's coming out of the wall, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Oh, I have a better design idea. Let me yell. Sorry, neighborhood. The angled piece that I'm attaching to the bottom is where the actual light bulb is going to attach to. So that's why I created a hole and filed it down because we will be running electrical from the light bulb through the square tube that will then run through that square tube into the back of the spine down and then we can kind of connect it to the back end electrical within the wall so that way it's on a switch. I 150% just lied to you. I said that I was gonna create that top angled piece to go into the ceiling. I didn't. I forgot that I ended up just welding a smaller piece directly into the spine so it's just coming out of the back piece of the vanity fabrication. I knew that I wasn't going to wrap the weld up because I just didn't know what I wanted to do with the light bulb portion of the light fixture. So I held off from committing to that and moved on to creating a frame for the original mirror to the trailer bathroom to make that the vanity mirror of this trailer bathroom still. I just wanted to, you know, keep it all in the family. Okay, this 
I'm trying to be delicate because if you know me, I trip and tend to get glass in my hands. So we are going to weld a frame for this mirror and then weld it onto a fabrication that I have for the vanity in the bathroom. It's complicated, but it's easy. I know I'm pretty repetitive on this channel, so I don't want to repeat this entire process. We just did the framing welding on the last episode, so if you want to go all into detail on that, I am repeating the same exact process that I learned with Mr. Brett to this mirror to just create this metal frame that is typically very expensive, but I just made it literally out of scrap metal and a free mirror. Look at us go. I'll say it once, I'll say it again, I will say it a million times. I seriously do love my family over at HelloFresh. They are sponsoring today's episode. We work together every single month and they really just keep your girl completely sustained over here when I least expect it or don't remember to plan to. For instance, I just went out of town for a quick 48 hours to LA and when I came back, my fridge was completely empty and I was a little bit stressed because I was just like, oh, I thought I had groceries. Fast forward to not even a couple hours later, ironically, the delivery from HelloFresh showed up right to my door and I love that specifically in times like this but overall just because it's so convenient right to my doorstep three meals that I know I can make myself for dinner and also have for a lunch the next day I love that it cuts out the stressful meal planning and the prepping and I'm not wasting food and I can get dinner on the table in about 30 minutes or even 20 with their quick and easy options I don't feel bad that I rave about this service every single month because it single-handedly is just keeping me going out here and it's just allowing me to focus more on my projects because I don't need to to the grocery store because I can go onto the app and choose from 50 delicious menu items and customize what I'm getting right to my door, switch up my diet. It is all there for you. So if you guys are interested in trying out HelloFresh, you guys can go to HelloFresh.com and use my code METS14 to get 14 free meals plus free shipping. Yes, you heard that right. You can go to HelloFresh.com and use code METS14 to get 14 free meals plus free shipping. As always, thank you so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's episode. Let's get right back into the DIY. Hi, we brought the front of this mirror like I brassed Jade's DIY and now we're gonna see if the mirror fits that's the thing oh my god I think I made it too short that's an easy fix it doesn't fit I gotta take it to Brett's cut it down and make it fit oh man I can't believe I did that even the frame up here oh my god do not all right well I need to make some adjustments I thought I had it but I'm off an inch so there we go man Okay, we're back at the scene of the crime. The most fun part about welding for me, I've been realizing is basically like sanding down the edges if you wanted to compare it to woodworking. Grinding down the edges and seeing how good your welds are and how sharp your corners or whatever your welding is coming out has been so satisfying for me on this new journey. When I ran into welding something a little bit too big, Mr. Brett was out of town. So it was interesting to come back and just have this natural flow of things to know how to fix it. Maybe not totally the most secure way first time around, but I was able to angle grind the metal down and shorten it to what I needed it to be and just weld it back together and repeat the process of sanding it down and brassing to make it nice and flush and pretty. I've never had a hiccup where I need to fix something within welding, so it's fun to come back when Mr. Brett was out of town and just like cut that down with an angle grinder, shorten it to what I needed it to, being able to know how to use the welding machine and fix my mistakes. Oh, it just got me so excited. <laughs> This setup is gonna seem so crazy. I'm gonna be quiet because noise can carry and this will make sense in a couple of episodes. But what I like to do, um, gosh, this really feels like where in the world is Rachel San Diego, but you will find out in future in a future episode. Anyways, I'm not showing the reveal of the entire fabrication because fun fact, I wanna impress a special guest that hopefully is coming out this weekend, fingers. Fingers crossed, seriously. Um, and I'm saving it in hopes this person comes because I really want to finish the piece with this person and install it on the wall that we are supposed to do together. Um, it would just be very special to me. So, so even though I didn't show the fabrication, I showed the sketch or I'm going to show the sketch of what it is going to look like and what my idea was. And now that it is reality, um, it is just so much more tangible. So I wanted to DIY first, 
than design. Before we jump into design, I do want to remind you guys, I'm not a professional carpenter. I'm not a, I didn't go to school to be a designer. Um, I'm just a woman wanting to make my house a home with her own two hands. I'm the videographer, the photographer. I'm the client, the resident, the designer, the carpenter, the contractor, the shopper, the assistant, the boss. I'm all the things. Um, so when I want to design and just kind of shut the world out, I will do, oh, I can't wait to show you where I'm staying in the future episode, but I will do little mini retreats like this to really focus because it's hard when you live your dream life, like in the desert right now, I can get so distracted. I can just, I, all I can do is work. So I need to like physically remove myself. And sometimes it seems backwards to people, but for me, I need to deconstruct before I rebuild. Let's chat design. Like I said, I didn't go to school for it. I, I probably won't go to school for it. I Like I mentioned before, I'm just a woman making my house a home with my own two hands. That being said, I design based off of functionality for the people that are in my life. I'm not planning on reselling this land. This is my forever home. One of them, I'm gonna have uh, a bunch of them, but this is one of many. I really just design based off what I like. And some, and that's not for everybody. Like a lot of people think my my taste right now is a little bit on the older side or antique -y side. And that's just because I'm living in a house that was a home and I'm just going with the vibe of things. So the trailer, I really want it to be a lot different than what's gonna be in my main home, but I also want it to be this unexpected, like, whoa, this is so chic to be in a trailer that looks like this on the exterior. So the design inspiration strictly comes from expect the unexpected. For instance, as you can see like on the design board, you're gonna see this terrazzo tile, which I don't think you see terrazzo tile in a trailer very often, like this iridescent pearl. And we have those wood beam ceilings already that are making it look larger than life. And then we are gonna do this like DIY shower tub surround that I'm currently test like color concrete testing which I can give you a little sneak peek at but I need to tweak just a couple of things before I fully share that for you so the main walls will be white and then I'm going to be adding pops of color very minimally um, because that window with the view is the pop of color the desert is your pop of color and you're playing off the accents of the desert that's another design consideration so when it comes to functionality it's just the toilet the tub and a little space for you to back up check yourself out and wash your hands that's kind of how I'm thinking of a little pit stop in there I don't want to get too crazy because the craziness the luxuriousness that will be on the inside of my home mind you this is just a guest house but again um, I'm gonna do those unexpected details like a full tile terrazzo shower in the trailer like what the heck the craziest part about this fabrication that I'm doing here or weld that I am doing in this video is you're not even going to be able to see it when you walk into the bathroom. You're going to turn the corner and it's just going to be this moment of what? in the heck is happening on this wall right here. There's gonna be terrazzo tile, there's gonna be that brass fabrication with a custom sconce and a full length mirror with this plywood or I haven't decided colored concrete countertop in this half stone granite bath. Like what do you, who does that? Who does that? And then I'm gonna have the the water fixtures come out of the wall, which again, you can see kind of lined up on my sketch and which you can see on the design board itself. Um, and and I, I, yeah, I just needed to weld first. I just needed to get my hands dirty and make sure what I'm thinking is right. And since I am on the right path, even though I made a few mistakes, it just, gets me so pumped and so jazzed for my special guest to come out and to spend the episode with that guest pulling this fabrication together um, and just stepping back and oodling together. I really just, I really just can't wait for it. This is just the real process. I had to sit and make something that was going to go into the space to make sure that it was working before I put the walls up to then finish the accents that are going around this large fabrication. That is what this whole episode is about. And it's to tease the secret location. Um, what, oh my God, I can't wait to wake up in this freaking wonderland tomorrow. Anyways, 
I love you guys so very much. Thank you so much for just like a chill, figure it out episode prior to jumping into anything more serious and really wrapping up this bathroom. I just needed to take a breather for my brain uh, to make sure that I'm not wasting my friends' time when they come out here to help me. So I can't wait for you guys to see that episode. I will see you very soon for a, another DIY.